I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Um, thank you for tuning in to watch us today. Um, today we're going to be talking to Carol Lee Cantor, who is a painter, and um, she's brought some work to show us. And um, Carol, thanks for coming today. And thanks for having me. It's lovely to be here. Yeah, thank you. Um, Carol, how did you get into painting? Well, it's very interesting because I never thought of myself as a painter. But um, my husband liked my sketches. I used to sketch all the time, and he decided I ought to paint. Uh -huh. So <laughs> he suggested that I um, paint, and he brought home a whole lot of paints and uh, materials for me, and that started me off. I decided to take some of my sketches and, and paint them. Uh huh. And you've been just painting ever and since. And ever huh? since, whenever I get a chance, I just love to paint. Yeah. Where does your inspiration come from? All over. My inspiration comes from life. I think life is such so beautiful most of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoy uh, the little snippets of life that you want to hold on to. And you can't always, you can't hold on to it, but at least if you paint it, you can have it for a little while. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you paint from photographs, uh, you know, or from, you know, out, out in the, do you go out to paint, plein air? I do all of it. I do photographs sometimes, especially with my grandchildren. If I want to paint my grandchildren or people in the family, I'll use them as an example. But I'm not saying that the painting comes out exactly <laughs> looking like them. But the essence of uh, the person in the, in the I'm, I'm more of an impressionistic painter, I think. Yeah. So um, I do paint from photographs, but I like to paint from life, and I like to paint from nature as well. And sometimes I just paint from inspiration, from what I'm thinking about. Or sometimes they'll just be, um, I will be looking at an easel and I'll have my paints and I'll make a mark and next thing I know, a painting evolves. Or the painting comes out of the paint. <laughs> so, <laughs> you just don't know. You, know yeah. they, you, you arrive at it from different aspects. Well, for instance, you, you told me a little bit of a story about this painting behind us with the tree with the hole in it. Right. Now, how did that come about? Well, um, we were in Cold Spring, and you know it's lovely in Cold Spring by the harbor. And right beyond the harbor, there's a little, um, a little uh, uh, place where they they kind of keep the land beautiful. You know, it's a little resource for people to go and enjoy the harbor. And there's a lot of grass, and uh, so I would call it like a little reservoir. And one day, and that was in 2010. I was walking along and I saw there and I saw a tree and the tree, lo and behold, it had a hole in it and you could see the sky through the hole in the tree. And I said, I have to, I have to paint that. Then I took a picture. I took it home and I thought about it and I sat it to paint it and, and this is what happened. I, I got this. So I wanted to visit the tree again. A couple of years I, I went back later. I couldn't find it. I said, what happened? Maybe they cut the tree down or maybe the tree died. I didn't know what happened. Recently, I was in the same spot with my granddaughter who was visiting from South Carolina. And I told her about the tree and I said, I'm looking for a tree with a hole in it, but I don't think it's here. And lo and behold, it was there, but it had grown uh, yeah. in 10 years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Well, actually seven years, it, it had grown. And now I have a photo of the big tree and I'm going to paint the big tree, how it's grown, keeping yeah. track of its progress. And I'll go back and visit the tree again. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of how of when I might be out with my camera taking pictures mm -hmm. and I see something. And if I don't take it right then, mm -hmm. when I go back, it's gone. I know. You know, it's just you have to be right on the moment with I it to catch it. Just a precious thing to happen. Yeah. Now, when you, um, you were a social worker. Yes. Yes, and how do you think that, does that have any impact, you think, on your paintings and your artwork? Yes, I think um, in social work, you see a lot of life. Life happens, and you're working with people and life, and uh, you respect life a great deal, and you, as I say, you like to hold on to certain aspects of it. And um, I think it does have an impact somewhere, at least in the subconscious, it does, because uh, some of the feelings and emotions that you ha have um, tend to come out in your, in your paintings yeah. in, in different ways. Maybe by burst of color, uh -huh. because you feel happy about something. It might be in a certain line or in a, just a certain background, but I do think that um, one influences the other a great deal. Yeah. And what about, um, do you have favorite painters that you um, admire or, or 
Well, I love Marc Chagall. Uh -huh. Love Marc Chagall. I have uh, many of the prints of his paintings at home. No originals? Uh, no, no, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love all the masters. Um, my husband and I have, have traveled to a lot of museums and here and abroad and um, visited the masters. Um, I think one of the most beautiful but ugly paintings at the same time was uh, Picasso's, um, uh, you know, that big one. <laughs> yeah. Um, that he did in, in 1938. Word of Vaca or? Yeah. I don't know and, how to say um, that. I, I've been. We've been going to a lot of museums and uh, have seen many, many paintings. El Greco um, is a wonderful painter. There are just so many. Yeah. But um, Van Gogh, I love Van Gogh. We went to his museum in, um, in Holland. It was beautiful. Um, the Re Museum was beautiful. Uh, of course, the Metropolitan Museum of Art right here. Right in our backyard. Any painting you'd want to see, the MoMA has beautiful paintings, you know, just lovely. And then there are some of the smaller museums that have some beautiful paintings mm -hmm. of the masters. The one in uh, Poughkeepsie, you know, at Vassar College. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, has a wonderful. That's a terrific museum. A wonderful museum. Yeah. We spend a lot of time there. I love that museum. So there are many, many museums in the area. All you have to do is choose one and enjoy the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think I've been influenced by, you know, by the essence of some of the paintings of the artists that I've seen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it encourages me to to want to paint to continue yeah. to paint. And how about um do you you have you it seems you you don't paint in the same style all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You just kind of dabble or, or or change up. I know. I'm usually surprised myself. You know when I see what I'm painting, so am, I, am I doing, did I, and then when it's done, I say, did I do that? Oh, I did that, you know? Yeah. And even something that's taken me a long time, I look at it and I still don't believe that I did it. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so. I particularly like the paintings that you do of people. Thank you. And um, the one behind us, the wedding picture, I know you said that you don't usually show that, that it's, it's I guess it's a very personal painting. It's a personal painting, yeah. But yeah. Would you mind just telling us a little bit about it? Well. That my husband and I have been married for 50, it'll be 53 years in August, and these were all the people that were we were lucky enough to have at our wedding in uh, 1963. And in um, we had our 50th anniversary, and I had painted this a year before that because I was just inspired by the fact that my husband and I were married for 50, that we're going to be married for 50 years. So I, I painted it from a wedding picture. and. Um, and when we had our party, I, I had it at, at the party. Yeah. But um, it, it was it was really um, an emotional experience for me to do it because um, most of the people in the painting are no longer with us, and we miss them terribly. But this is a way of remembering them mm -hmm. and honoring them, and um, we were so happy that they could be at our wedding. And if you notice in the background, there are pictures of there's kind of spirits, and that would be some of our ancestors that we always feel <laughs> they're there <Yeah. laughs> with us at, <laughs> the, with you. at yeah. the wedding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what would you hope that people take away from your work? I, I don't know. I, th I think it's a personal thing when people look at our work. Um, it's a kind of a personal thing. And so um, they kind of take away what they want. You know, maybe, maybe they like the colors. Maybe they like the, maybe they're understanding the theme. Um, or maybe they just are enjoying it. But if they walk away feeling a little bit better than they felt <laughs> when <Yeah>. they <laughs> first came in, then I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to be doing the Artist Open Studio Tour in October, aren't you? I am delighted, you? yes. And it's such a wonderful group of uh, people to be with, yourself included. Um, I'm delighted to be included. And um, I'm hoping people come to my home and see more of my paintings, yeah. you know. Uh, I welcome everybody to come. Yeah. It's a wonderful, I think Art East is the most wonderful venture. I think it's great. <laughs> it's, I think that the community, it's so wonderful for the community to it be is. able to see what the artistic community is doing. Yeah. yeah, and you also do interviews, don't you, for Pauling Public Radio? Tell me I about that. Do. Well, um, I've been with Pauling Public Radio since it started in 2007. And we were hoping to have a community radio station. Uh, we thought it was great, so everybody's voice could be heard that wanted to to talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. 
music playing and you know, just the and Lana, we were lucky enough to have you on the show as well. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be doing some more about artists in the future. Yes. So yes. we're very excited about Lana being hostess on uh, Community Focus, it's called, uh, which is a program that um, I originated a few years ago. And that was so that we could have community voice and anybody with a program they'd like to talk about or a venture that they're doing or a fundraising or whatever they're doing to help. Um, again, that's part of my credo. <laughs> the program um, is open to them to come and, and call us at Pauling Public Radio. We'd love to have you on the show and come and join Pauling Public Radio a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and Pauling Public Radio is something that was started by volunteers and, and uh, Pauling Public has Radio really developed is, into is, something. Yes, it's an all volunteer. It started out as a volunteer project, just uh, as a community project. And um, like Comcast, it also welcomes the community to, to be involved and, and to, be, to be heard and to, to get your events known. And it's, it, it's a wonderful thing that we can all communicate with each other and hear yeah. each other and yeah. speak to one another. Yeah. It's good to communicate. Getting back to your paintings, for just mm -hmm. uh, uh, going back to it, what kind of paints do you use? Do you do oils, acrylics? I am primarily an oil painter. I started out with oil paints. Uh, of course, as a child, I did the watercolor with the <laughs> little watercolor box in the, from the uh, Boston Public Schools, where I went to where I went to school. And my first that was really my first encounter with art was the little paint box with yeah. all the watercolors. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, but I, I have been doing um, oil paints. Sometimes I use acrylic. Like if I want a fast drying paint, I'll use acrylic, but somehow I just always return to oil paints. I like the way they blend and I like the way they, they move on the, on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, any new work that, that you're working on currently or any new direction that you're taking? Well, I'm doing a little more abstraction. Um, I was doing a, a lot of people, landscaping, I just did the um, nature, the ducks. I have to tell you about the ducks <laughs> that come every year to our wetland, uh, our neighbors that live uh, next to us. And we share this land, and it's a wetland. And every year, the same two ducks, or the same ducks from the same family, come. We like to think it's the same ducks from the same family, come to the wetlands and, uh, and, do, and enjoy spring. So this is called Romance in the Wetlands. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is a very romantic place for the, for the ducks and the frogs. And yes, everything. it is. So um, we enjoy that. And so then I've started to do a little more uh, nature scene. And also um, starting with this abstract, which was called Life's Journey, which actually started out as a drip painting. Uh -huh. And then the painting was in the painting, was in the paint. I don't know how many people have that experience, but sometimes you're painting something, you're not sure exactly what you're painting. You know you're painting, you're enjoying it, but there, there it is, it's in the painting, and then you just say, it's done, stop. You know, I said what I'm saying. We called it Life's Journey because this particular abstraction has the, has the figure kind of caught in a bayou somewhere. And not sure where she's going, tangled up a little bit, but it's still she's moving on that journey and it and she's moving she's moving and forward. she's moving no matter what she's yeah. moving yeah. so and i didn't intend to do it it just happened yeah. so. that's a great story <gasps> on that note we're going to have to leave it Aww. and um but before we go i just wanted to say um uh, to let everybody know how um we staff people here and it's everybody's volunteers who work with us and um i wanted to thank them and to thank you thank you